Here you go, optimizer. All right, so the way that it looks like it works is you attach the module to the frame using these metal clips here, and that kind of bonds the module to the frame. As you can see here, there's little tiny little bite mark teeth here, that little bite into the frame, giving this metal clip a bond to the panel. All right, you attach it to the panel, and then you attach the uh, cables from the panel to the optimizer. And then you can connect the optimizers together. I guess if you're doing series or parallel, or whatever, I guess this picture here is, looks to be series. When you're connecting input cables, when you're connecting it. So make sure you install the optimizer to the module before you connect the modules together. If you're disconnecting the optimizer, disconnect the output cables from the string before disconnecting the input from the PV module. So this here says connect the input cables to the module before connecting the output cables in series. Like I said, so if you're installing it, make sure you connect these first and then the modules. Look at that, they even got a little QR code on the screen. Here's a little uh, documentation on what's really going on with this, but the maximum uh, system voltage is about 1000 or 1500 volts. I'm not sure what the deal is. Maybe this is a different model or whatnot. But you know, most of the uh, all-in-one uh, solar systems or whatnot will go up to maybe about 450 or 500. So I don't think you're going to have an issue with this. As you can see here, here's the actual module. It's a Tigo TS4AO. I believe the O stands for optimizer. Maximum system voltage is 1500 volts UO and 1000 IEC. Maximum input output DC is 80 volts, 15 amps, 700 watts. And I think that's per a unit. So that should be good each time you want to, you know, connect it to your system. Just make sure that's within specs, right? It even says here, must connect the panel first. Face this side towards the panel. So this part gets connected towards the panel. Here's two short cables for that. It even says here, connect the short cables before the long cables. Right, so make sure you connect the uh, module to the system first again. So they've put this like everywhere. They put it down uh, in the instructions, in the steps. Then they also wrote it here, a note. I'm sure it probably, if you scan these instructions, it probably says that there too, right? But then they even wrote it here, right? Connect the short cables before the long cables first. So that's like a fourth reminder, almost a third or fourth reminder. And then they even put it here. So it's like five times. So they really want you to do that. There's probably some reason for them wanting you to do that. If you don't do that, you could probably screw up the system and to, to make sure that they even put a tag on here that you can't take off without reading it, you know, definitely do that, all right? Uh, but other than that going on here, you know, that's all you really get. You get a little cable length here that really helps you connect to the cable, but you know, you can't really mess this up. It seems so straightforward. So I'm gonna go ahead and get maybe almost all of these installed and we'll see how it goes. All right, you guys, so the reason we really have these optimizers is because this panel right here in the end, number one panel here, um, has a little bit of a shading problem, like right here first, mainly due to this wall that's right here as the sun's coming up. So even though maybe some of these panels may have full, full sun, this panel here will have a little bit of a shade on it, and we'll see if we can get a picture of it later. And also this panel right here, we're gonna see how much the optimizers can really help, right? So if the, when the sun comes up all the way and it's at its peak spot, then it doesn't have a problem, right? Uh, but as it's coming up, you know, you'll see that this part has a shade and this part here also has a shade. The other side of e that equation is this panel here, because um, as the sun is moving this way, there's a deck right here that shades, you know, this corner of the panel. So maybe for about two or three hours for a good few hours, the entire array is lit, right? But this end panel and these two panels, beginning panels, will have a little bit of a, of a shading problem. So I did play with it a little bit, saying is it easier just to run, you know, two or three panels with full irradiance or, you know, full lit the whole time. We tried it for a week or two and we eventually figured out having, um, more panels even with the shading provides more over the course of a day because when it's at its peak you're actually getting much more uh energy in 
right? So it almost kind of broke even, didn't really make sense, but we just wanted to have more panels. That way you can get a little bit more, you know, as the sun's coming up and it's not too lit because you get the higher system voltage, which allows you to get more over the time, right? Even though the sun is not hitting them right now, you're still pulling in maybe like 200 watts or something like that, right? So that's why we have it set up like this. But for now, we're gonna see if we can go ahead and get the modules connected to them and see how that works out. All right, you guys, so let's take a look at the mess going on up in here. Um, it's a little bit of a mess. I'll probably have to come back and run some better cable management with it. But the way I installed them was I installed them on the side of the panels, and then I connected the panels to the modules first, and then you saw me come back later and then connect the modules together, okay? But uh, they're installed on the side of the panel in my case, mainly because these Helion panels on the top edge and the bottom edge, they only have a quarter of an inch lip right here right so if you look at the optimizer you need a good uh, inch or so to connect the optimizer to the panel so for me i had to install mine on the side and i think th these are supposed to be ip68 rated or something like that but the manufacturer actually recommends that you install them on the top edge mainly due to water infiltration uh, things that may happen or to minimize that right but in my case like i said it's kind of impossible for me to do that, as you can see here. So I've installed them on the lip side edge here for now. Um, I don't think they're gonna have too much of an issue. I mean, they may have an issue. We're gonna see how that goes, but I don't really have an option because I can't install them on the bottom lip because I can't flip the solar panel upside down because they're pretty much the same, the top and bottom. So the only option I had was to mount them on the side, okay? So, uh, like I said earlier, you saw me pretty much come back and mount um, the modules to the panels and then connect the panels to the short lead, which is the module cable, and then connect the modules together. And that's what we have going in up on here. Um, it is easy to mix it up if you don't have it labeled or done correctly, mainly because um, you know the MC4 connectors are pretty much the same. So what I did was I just left the uh, wire ties on them and then make sure I connected the uh, panels to the short leads on the modules first to make that happen and then came back around and connected it all right so right now it's kind of all connected it looks like a spider web of mess in here the one thing you will have to take note and take away from here is each time you connect one of these there's going to be four extra cables right and then maybe two extra connectors for each panel so that's a lot of cables you're gonna have to deal with um, i'll definitely recommend you know using some cable ties and managing them properly but in my case, that's what's going on here. All right, you guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of this preliminary data, okay? First of all, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is preliminary data, mainly because Mother Nature is not working with me, meaning we do not have a good apples to apples type comparison, which is gonna be impossible, but we're not even close to apples and apples, okay? Uh, what I mean by that is every day since we've installed it has been almost cloudy, rainy, misty, uh, thunderstorming or whatever it may be ever since we've installed it so it's been really rough to get a good numbers comparison okay so that's why we're gonna say we're looking at this preliminary data and then maybe in a couple weeks or a couple months or whatnot we'll have better data okay so with that being said we're looking at the EG4 monitoring dashboard if you don't know what that means uh, on some of the EG4 products there is a monitoring website that you can log in to view data okay about your system or the things you have plugged into your system so this right now is a 6000 xp uh system that i have here with the optimizer connected to and we're going to be looking at this data all right so uh, like i mentioned earlier nothing's going to be perfect uh you know we can't control the clouds or the weather or anything like that so take this with the grain of salt and then we'll come back and hopefully have more data okay so i'll tell you right now the optimizers were installed in the morning a part of july 15th and that's this is the month that we're in today okay so if you just take a quick glance at it you're going to say wow these numbers are much lower than you would probably expect them to be and yeah they're probably right because like i said cloudy thunderstorm thunderstorm misting all that kind of fun stuff here so uh with that being said we're going to take a basic look at it and then what i mean by that is you're going to take a look at this and say okay we got 8.6 here 11.1 there 9.5 5.8 4.7 3.96 but you're going to say wow that means absolutely nothing to me because there's no idea 
on what the weather was like. So the way we're going to solve that is we're going to go look at uh, timeanddate.com that gives you the, the weather for, you know, previously of what happened. Okay. So if you go back and take a look at this day, right, let's take a look at July. You're going to say, okay, sunny, mostly cloudy, sunny, you know, passing clouds, mostly cloudy, mostly cloudy, passing clouds, passing clouds, sunny, mostly cloudy. But the date that we're really interested in is probably, or the time area we're really interested in is probably between six to six, mainly because uh, I would say this array or this system starts getting power mainly um, right around uh, right around 6:30 or so is when it actually passes that minimum threshold to start getting power. Okay, so we're really only concerned about that part. But I will say illumination for this array really happens past noon right and then peak power production for this array comes maybe between i would say maybe uh three to four maybe it's probably the peak time so those are the times we're really going to look at okay uh but since we're talking about optimizers you want to know how does it do with shade how does it do with not peak radiance right well let's find out right so uh going back to this time uh, if you look at the first we had 8.6 11.1 9.5 and you know six was the lowest july 6 right so we go back here taking a look at july 6 you know we had a high of 88 and mostly cloudy okay so uh instead of trying to you know take a uh, mathematical average of all of this data which you know you can't really do very well with a single number uh, we're going to take a look at specific times in the day to figure out how that works okay like i mentioned um, we installed this array on the 15th, um, or, or not the array, the optimizers on the 15th morning half. You can see here where we had to shut it down for a little bit, installed the optimizers, turn it back on, realized, hey, we forgot a few panels, uh, tur uh, turn it off again, install the other ones, and then come back here. Okay, so just for easy sake and time reference, we're just going to use 12 o'clock. Okay, at uh, 12 o'clock on the 15th, we had uh, 7.38, right, and on the 16th, we had uh, 187 on the day after that. We had 738. The day after that, we had you know 325. The day after that, we had 671. The day after that, you know 552. You can kind of see a pattern here. Uh, the peak that we were able to achieve here is maybe about 700 at 12 o'clock, right? Uh, which includes a good amount of cloudiness and shading. But you can tell on a good day right you're going to get maybe up to about 700 with cloudiness and stuff like that we're going to get maybe you know depending on how bad it is in the 300s or 200s right so let's go take a look at a few days before the optimizer was installed so let's just go take a look at the 14th 12 o'clock it was you know we got 227 um at 12 o'clock on the 13th 200 12 o'clock on the 12th 223 on the 11th at 12 o'clock, uh, 191, about 200, you know, about 216 here, day before that. And before that, we also had maybe 367, right? Uh, maybe about 400, uh, day before that, about 374, uh, and about 300 after that. So, you know, if you just go back and take a look at it, as you saw, the maximum you were ever able to achieve at around 12 o'clock for this array without optimizers was maybe close to a peak of 500, mostly averaging uh, on most of these days, somewhere between probably two to 300. On some days, uh, good days, like 400, right? So um, every day after that, not every day after, but the maximum we were able to achieve after the 15th, right, was 700. So we went from somewhere between high 400s, let's just say 500s, to above 700, right, on the uh, at 12 o'clock for for a good day. That's an increase of you know maybe about 200 ish watts peak, right? So we're just using the peak numbers like 500 peak day before that, right? to uh, maybe peak of like 700, 200 watts of increase across, uh, what is that, about uh, seven panels of optimizers. Uh, that's 200 divided by seven, 200 divided by seven is mainly roughly about 30 watts per panel, if you were to average it out. And like I said, the optimizers don't really work exactly in that manner because you were talking about the performance of the whole array, but 200, 
um, across seven panels is close to about 30 watts per panel, right? So in this case, what I could say is um, it is worth it in terms of it does help you get more power out of your system if you're having issues with shading, cloudiness, and that kind of stuff, right? Because um, I looked back before recording this for multiple days and I was never able to get close to 700 at 12 o'clock, okay? But after we've installed the optimizers, there's been a few occurrences where at 12 o'clock, you know, we got more, right? So let's go take a look at the maximum power produced, right? At any given time, three, uh, close to 3,300. Peak here is maybe about 3,000. Afterwards, uh, the 24th is about 3,100. Uh, today is the 25th, right? So there's not too much data here, but even just today at noon, we had maybe 800, right? So that's a good day uh, with the power, right? But if you go back and look, let's just say any of these days before the optimizer was installed, Let's go take a look here. We had maybe about three, uh, one, 3,100, 27, 27 uh, here, maybe about 3,100. So you can tell when the array is fully illuminated, the optimizers aren't really gonna help you too much, at least from what I can tell here. The part that they really help you with is when some area of your array has some type of issue with shading or maybe some type of cloudiness, right? It helps get some of that uh, optimized as you know pun intended there so um, the optimizers I would say in my opinion um, are kind of worth it in a way of you can get more at a certain given time right um, when they're shading or, or some type of performance like that uh, but you have to figure out you know you're gonna be paying somewhere close to about 40 bucks per an optimizer and you have to have them on the panels right so if you have an entire array where only a few parts of them are uh, shaded you can install it on just those parts obviously that's not the recommended setup does that really work that way I'm not sure because I've installed it on every uh, panel that I had right so if you account an additional 40 bucks per panel to get maybe, let's just say 30 watts uh, uh, increase per panel, granted you have that issue, it could be worth it, right? But if you have a ton of land, right, and then um, you ha have no restrictions, maybe you could just invest that $40 per panel on just more panels, right? And just not put any of the panels in the shaded area. So that's a decision you're gonna have to make. But in some cases, I can go ahead and say initially, this optimizer does seem to be doing its job because I am able to get more, right? Um, I would say consistently, uh, you know, taking the weather stuff aside. So my opinion is 40 bucks per panel, if you have constraints to work with, could be worth it, okay? So hope this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions, let us know. Like I said, we'll come back another time and take a better look at it over time. But have a great day. Uh, if you have other inputs or you're gonna say, hey, we did something wrong or we're not using it right, let us know because we want to learn and maximize the efficiency or usage of this stuff, right? So uh, if you have a good way to you know, help us out, then let us know. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time.